Hello, everyone. Welcome to the DeFi Dojo Weekly Outlook. Um, I am Groot. This is Bonsai Trading, and today is August 25th, 2024, and we're going to take a look at the markets, the charts, and what we might be able to expect in the week ahead. Last week was um, was like, you know, the witching hour for crypto. It was its last chance to uh, get itself back up in order to save itself from entering a bear market. Um, and I think that it did that. I think we got enough to, um, to keep ourselves bullish. If we look at the weekly chart, we can see we are no longer at risk of a bear market. Those EMAs did not cross uh, by the hair of its chinny chin chin. It looks like um, that's pretty damn close, right? But this is a super bullish candle. We got up through both EMAs. We got up through the R3 pivot again. So now all of this down here around 62, 62.7 uh, zone is going to be our support and we want to see that hold. We do not want to have another event like this, right? So optimistically speaking, I think this is good. And I think that this week we could see a either a continuation up to the top of the bull flag, uh, which this is definitely still a bull flag. Um, this is a massive bull flag on the weekly and it's kind of what I would expect to see uh, before the main stage bull market starts. And I still have our targets as high as 173,800 for Bitcoin. Now that is being very optimistic, right? Uh, previous cycles have told us that um, this is getting weaker. Um, we had our you know original cycles would go all the way up to the 2.272. Last cycle topped out at the 1.618, and so if that trend continues, then maybe we can you know expect the 1.414, or maybe we top out at the 1.272. Uh, I do think that we're going to get there still. I think with last week's candle, I, it has restored my confidence in crypto overall. Uh, majority of that confidence is in Bitcoin, of course, right? Because it is still bullish. If we look at Ethereum, it's a totally different story. Uh, EMAs are bearish. But in a bull market for Ethereum, that does happen. You know, we can see that that happened here. And now maybe we're getting the same thing here. So I'm not yet going to say that I'm going to definitely sell uh, all of my Ethereum as soon as we tap that EMA. Um, now, if if Bitcoin went bearish, right, then yes, I would be. But because it recovered last week, I am now a little more um, wanting to hold because I think that I, like, I don't want to be the guy that sold the bottom of this before we freaking head up to these. Oh, I don't have them drawn on here, but head up to those bull market targets uh, which I can go ahead and map those out again and get rid of this one because it's in the way and get rid of those pivots. All right, so these would be our bull market targets for Ethereum, anywhere from 7.7 to 14K, which would be, um, you know, really amazing. And it would be really bad if I was the guy who sold down here. We're still clearly in an uptrend and because of that, and, I mean, that was a perfect 0.5 touch here, um, you know, and the trend line. So with with as much as this is consolidating and respecting my fibs here, like see that support there at 25.32, that's a main spot now. If we fall below that, then yeah, we're probably in trouble. So I think as long as we hold this obvious, you know, what was resistance here and is now confirming support here for many weeks in a row, uh, I think we can see our move back up and I'm willing to risk some gains uh, because, you know, we're in from like, you know, the bottom anyway. So I'm willing to risk gains because I can sit comfortably with my average uh, way down here anyway. And I've been converting my Bitcoin into Ethereum over the last several months. And that is obviously hurting right now, right? Like that maybe not have been a good decision, but I'm still holding because we're holding this channel. And I don't want to sell Ethereum at the bottom of this channel. I would much rather sell it at the top of the channel at the very least, right? Um, and all trends end up breaking eventually. So I am still optimistic that Ethereum can have its day uh, or, you know, a few months, hopefully. And um, you guys can hear me okay, right? Everything's good? Yeah, looks good. 
So, um, you know, I, I would much rather sell at this resistance than sell at this support is basically what I'm saying. So I don't want to be the guy that sells the bottom, um, especially when I'm sitting comfortably with my uh, with my averages on Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I am still holding and waiting to see uh, what things look like. Now, with that said, total market cap isn't quite bullish yet either. So while we did get the candle we wanted, uh, closing both you know over both, this th these weekly EMAs doing this is not normal. It's it's very strange. I've gone back through all of the history on these charts, and it's never done what it's doing right now, where it goes bearish on the weekly and then bullish again a couple of weeks later. So it's definitely not typical, and it definitely makes it very, very difficult. Um, so that is another reason why I am deciding not to be too hasty with the selling. Um, I do still think that the main cycle has yet to happen. Um, if history repeats itself and we have that huge euphoric, you know, rise on Bitcoin and crypto, uh, I don't want to be left behind, right? So I'm willing to risk that uh, those gains in order to see if we can break this bull flag. There's a lot of bullish structure here overall. We held the th 236 here on all of these candles. None of, none of these candles closed below the 236. So as long as we're holding all this, I'm willing to hold. If we look at USDT dominance, we closed the candle below the 8 EMA and the 5.36, like just barely, but that's enough. That's, that's all you need. You can already see that that is becoming, you know, resistance just to start this weekly candle that's only been open for 37 minutes. Um, you can come in here and you can, you know, see that that's what's going on, right? Like this is kind of where we're consolidating and that is hitting its head there. So we'll see what this week brings. I do think that it's potentially going to be a choppy consolidation type week. What we don't want to see is a candle close back below these EMAs. And you can see that that wouldn't take much for that to happen. So uh, kind of a waiting week for me. I, I think I'm just going to hold off on any sort of short term trading with crypto um, still. And that's mainly because this chart here is telling me I'm still better off trading the NASDAQ than I am Bitcoin short term. Um, and until we get this over this uh, downtrend, I want to trade the NASDAQ. I would much rather scalp options over there and just hold my spot crypto until things improve. And I can be more confident short term trading crypto once we break and get up into these highs. Um, and, you know, that could be as soon as this week and that could be a couple months from now. I don't know. And when the chart tells me to do it, that's when I'll do it. Uh, looking at equities, the dollar is just tanking, right? So last week, the fibs I was showing you were based off of this low, right? So based off the most recent low, we have broken below the 0.5, back underneath the downtrend, and very well could be heading down towards the this golden pocket here. But then I looked back further in history, and I noticed I had a lower low back here. So I just stretched it back here, and I noticed that we were hitting the 0.5 pretty perfectly. And we did not close, come on, we did not close below it. You know, I'm not going to zoom in, but just trust me, we didn't close below it. Um, and we're currently sitting like right on it. So we could get a relief bounce off the dollar here. And another thing that's telling me that that might be possible is the fact that we are oversold on the weekly for the first time since January of 2018. That's six years. Um, so we've touched the 30 on the RSI on the weekly for the first time in six years here. Um, so that's kind of a big deal, right? So there's definitely that possibility of a relief bounce for the dollar. And what that can do is, you know, disrupt uh, equities and crypto if, if this wants to give us a relief bounce. Um, so I'm not saying we're out of the woods yet on crypto. We could very well get another move back down below everything. And then next week we're right back to, are we in a bear market again? Um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of, there's a lot that can happen in a short percentage move uh, this week, and so I'm still going to be waiting, but I am optimistic with last week's candle. Uh, looking at altcoins, so total three, we're still in this downtrend, so I don't really want to be risking altcoins uh, yet until we at least break up over that downtrend. And looking at, <clears throat> I think that covers everything. Uh, the Dow Jones, oh yeah, let's look at ES. So ES is back to being bullish, and now we have support at 
this area here, which is right. I just wanted to zoom out first so I can show you this, this channel. And I know there's a lot of lines here, but I used them all, so I didn't want to delete them. This white line is the all time trend line and it stretches like decades back. Um, and so I like using this as kind of like where I want to buy things. And whenever we're under that line is when I want to buy things. And whenever we're over that line, I'm just holding, right? Uh, but I do plan on taking more profits as soon as we hit this 1.618, which I do think still will come uh, before elections. And then, as I mentioned previously in uh, other videos, I plan on waiting to see if we get a little bit of a distribution up here before I decide to try to swing um, a short off of that. And I would basically just swing that down to the bottom of the channel. Um, and then when this channel breaks, that's when I would be like, okay, maybe we're starting to head into a little bit of a bear market here. Uh, NASDAQ kind of the same situation. We got this nice channel and I'll get rid of some of these lines so you can see them. Uh, and that yellow line is the all time trend line for the NASDAQ. And, and if you remember back in like October of 22, we spotted this bullish divergence here and we started buying a whole slew of things in the long term uh, channel. And I don't really post much in there anymore. Why? Because we're in like the high areas. So um, I've been holding things from the bottom and taking profits as we head higher. Uh, we are in the take profit zone for both ES and for NQ. And that take profit zone is where I have this box drawn out here in between the 1.272 and the 1.618. Um, and so you can see as soon as we entered into that zone, we get a really large sell-off, right? Um, it's not really the same as this sell-off where it was like a bull flag. So you can already see the selling pressure happening and we did get a really nice bounce here, uh, but now we're back into that zone and I think we could, you know, inch our way up through here uh, before elections. Notice that that apex kind of happens right around October. So that's just before elections, right? So the timing is kind of cool to see these two lines intersect right around October of 2024. Um, so the kind of, you know, the narrative and the technicals kind of line up nicely here. Um, so I am considering a like swing long on QQQ and SPY. Uh, if we get like a retest of the eight EMA this week, maybe I'll start kind of averaging into some longs to hold for a while. Uh, and that currently is sitting right around 19.5 on the NASDAQ and around 55.47 for ES. Um, and then that's where I would maybe, you know, take some, take some longs up to like, and you'd have to go chart SPY and QQQ to get their respective fibs, but um, you could just, you know, long when it touches here and then wait until we get, you know, near these highs in a couple months. Um, <clears throat> to, to take your profits on them. And I think that might be a very good trade. That's invalidated if we break the 1.414 here and fall lower. And then it's invalidated if we break below the 21 EMA on the weekly, which is the 1.272 around 19K on the NASDAQ. The Dow Jones is also showing me bullishness. We just closed over the 1.414 for the first time. Um, and that's great news. That means we can now head to the 1.618. We do have an R3 pivot just before that, so I do expect to see some resistance in there, and you can kind of, you know, draw yourself a little channel line here and just kind of see where that ends up being. That takes us to January, so it doesn't really make much sense. Although, you know, we could get like a distribution and money moving to value, and the Dow Jones outperforms tech for a little while afterwards, and that's why I say like, you know, we might we might see a distribution happening here um, where it might not be a good idea to really swing short until you start seeing a distribution of some sort in this zone. Um, but I will scalp it for sure when we first touch it because I think that'll, you, that, you know, 1.618s when they touch the first time, you get reactions. Um, and so that's usually where I'll take advantage of a pretty, a pretty decent short, uh, but it would be more of like a swing for a week or a scalp of some sort day trade. Um, and those are the trades I wait for because I can be confident in those and I can go heavy and then I can enjoy the rest of my day. Uh, I'm not trying to trade things a million times a day because it just takes too much work, it's too much stress, and I don't really have the time for it. So, all right, I think that takes care of everything. Uh, if anybody has any questions, chart requests, uh, we were just talking about Matic before the live stream started. And I think as soon as this thing can get up over the 60 cent mark, we can, we can confidently swing that long up to the highs you know, maybe we can get a buck out of this. I don't know. Uh, but it's in a giant triangle. Um, and so 60 cents to a dollar would be a great, a great swing. 
Uh, MACD is kind of looking like it wants to maybe cross, and so once we get that cross, it would likely be over that 60 cent mark. We could kind of maybe use that as support, try to try to long it, you know, as close to 60 cents as possible, um, and try to make that like our average. Uh, and then stop loss would need to be, you know, you'd use EMAs at that point on the daily, which are now bullish and coming down to retest. So, you know, we could see 48 on Matic again or 51. Uh, and those could be some good entries if you'd like to at least try to swing that to the 60 cent mark. But while we're under, I would definitely take profits there first, wait for a daily close over, retest, grab it long stops underneath the EMAs will be moved up by then and then we can take it one level at a time up to the dollar mark hopefully okay let's see we got ton let's look at ton good old telegram ton coin nope not that one that's perps let's look at that one I don't really like that chart either let's put a T there I guess that's about all we get. Is there? I hate trying to find like the oldest chart. That's better. Oh, that's the one I've been using. Okay. Oh, it looks like I spotted divergence a while ago, and that's where it was. And then that's what happened since. We didn't quite make the two. That 1.618 should so far be providing support. So there is still some hope there. Uh, So there's still some hope that that's going to recover off the 1.618, but if it if it falls any further below, then that's not great. I don't like last week's candle. So last week, with this this complete opposite of what Bitcoin did, uh, this closed below both EMAs in one shot. So that's pretty bearish, honestly. Um, and we're already we already we're like right on it. So right now the price is exactly what the 1.618 is. So it's been holding support for a lot of long time. Um, and it's not really bouncing. So I don't know if I like it until we at least break this little downtrend. And it looks like a head and shoulders on the daily, so that's bearish. It's not great. I don't, I'm not super thrilled with it. Like if I was a new, new trader, I wouldn't be buying this up, up here. It looks like it can do that again. Um, so let's see if we were going to try to map out where this could fall. I would have to take that trend line there. Go here. And then take this low. Somewhere around here to this high. And yeah, like 618.5382 that would be where you'd want to like DCA if you believe in this this long term um, and I wouldn't be a buyer until at least we broke back over that trend downtrend and then if you're wanting to short it then you're gonna want to try to grab a retest of the 236 when that 8 EMA rolls down lower so this could kind of give us a bounce back up here in a couple days when that EMA falls further down here to the 236 around 595. And then you could try to short that down to the 382 around 485. If that breaks, then you'll continue lower to the 0.5. And I wouldn't really be a buyer uh, confidently until we got back down into these areas here. So I hope that helps. NVIDIA earnings this week. Ooh, juicy. I do not like playing earnings, uh, but I do like watching it. So it broke the downtrend, still in a giant freaking like wedge looking thing. Like eventually this thing's just gonna bring the whole market down. Uh, timing it is difficult, but it's definitely back to being bullish. It broke over the downtrend last week, so it's bullish on that account. And I'd say as long as we're above that trend line, this yellow one, when earnings come out, then you know we could head up to you know this trend line again. But I don't really see a whole lot of room for upside until we break back up over that white one. Maybe the R one's it, right? So get over 130, 141, then we can head we can head up to new all time highs. And let's draw some fibs. So 
what happens here, and let me try to make this easier to see. What happens here is when you draw a retracement, so you draw this downtrend as soon as you see that the downtrend is broken, um, and it kind of is, but it's it didn't get a sell off in the golden pocket. It didn't reject the 0.5. It didn't reject the 382. Like it's just V-shaped recovery all the way up to the greed FOMO zone. Close the candle over, below, over, below, over. So we haven't really had a golden pocket sell off. There is no real uh, pullback from this this move from the lows. So usually you'll get one even in the greed FOMO zone if you didn't get one down here somewhere. So it wouldn't surprise me to see this fall back down um, and, and then consolidate further. Um, but it's NVIDIA and it's the most bullish stock that we've had for a long time. Um, and it's basically driving all of tech with the AI narrative. Um, I still have yet to see any real evidence that the AI narrative is going to be something that will just continue exploding um, without a bubble a pop of some sort, right? So it is risky buying this high, uh, but it is NVIDIA. They are very profitable. They have a lot of cash and they're one of the best performing companies in America. So um, it's, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty big. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't short it, that's for sure. It's definitely bullish on the daily. It's definitely bullish on the weekly. But would I, like, try to long that on earnings? No, it's too risky. You never know what can happen with that. Best thing to do on that is wait for earnings to come out, wait a week, and then try trading it. Uh, the RSI is divergent bearishly, but the MACD is not. So, you know, that's also kind of giving mixed signals. There's not a whole lot to to go off of with it, and I would rather pick something else that I could be more confident in. How about coin? Coin. So, here's your golden pocket sell off, then into the greed FOMO zone, and then it sold off again. So I would say if we can get over 218, then that's long. And I wonder where it's gonna open up tomorrow with this move from Bitcoin. If this, if this opens up over 218.37, then I would definitely consider longing this back up to 279, like a swing. Um, and the EMAs are not bearish yet. They're doing that thing where it looks like they're gonna curl. So this week, this might do really well. Um, I kind of like that a lot. I might trade that. Thanks for pointing that out to me. I might trade that. If we open up tomorrow over 218, then or over these these fibs in this this EMA, I, I would definitely consider longing that. And let's see where we might go. So two thirty five would be the first the first spot, and then over two thirty five, this can really start cooking. So yeah, I like that a lot. That might be a fun trade this week. Phantom. You know, of course, if Bitcoin starts selling off again, then that's the whole coin trade's probably gonna be moot. Okay, so you can probably get it up to the downtrend around 55, 56 cents. And then that's where I would take profits and wait for a close over. 56 cents is gonna be a tough nut to crack there. Uh, 21 EMA on the weekly is our current resistance. So first thing we got to get over is 53.8. Um, and usually when you get these moves down like this and you break back up over the 8 EMA, uh, it likes to monkey around in here. And so that's one of the main reasons why I think we might just get a consolidation week this week is because I see a lot of altcoins that look like this where, you know, it finally recovered. And now everyone's going to be super bullish and jumping in longs. And then they're just going to get chopped up um, because usually when you're in between the EMAs, it's a no trade. You wait for things to go over, cross bullish, retest, and then you take your trades. Um, and that helps avoid being chopped up. Uh, but it's a good start. Break the downtrend and we can talk. Super. So.
So did that break? Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Uh, we did get a close over the EMA, so that's a bullish move. It's currently fighting, come on pivots, the R1. And so, yeah, I mean, it's gonna take some time. The MACD is still under center. This needs to cross up. So it's, it's gonna take a couple weeks, I think, at least for alts to move higher if, if they're going to. And, um, you know, if you think that total three is going to break this downtrend and that we've seen the worst of it, um, you can see we're very close to entering bearish momentum here. So like if this market's going to recover and go higher, it needs to happen pretty soon, right? Because these, these helper indicators down here are telling us we're very close to entering bearish territory. And in order for it to not, then that means in the next week or two, altcoins need to make that move higher and break that downtrend. So that means that if there's ever a time to take the risk on alts, it's like now, right? So knowing that you're not, you're likely not going to get instant results, right? You can, you can kind of wait patiently for those little bits of uh, dips to happen, to average into them over the next week or two. And then if we end up falling back below the EMAs and this MACD, for example, ends up curling down below center, and then you see the RSI average kind of fall below 50, like right now we're at 51, then that is kind of your cue to like, all right, let me just bail, like just get out. Um, but if this is the bottom, then this would be where it starts to make its move higher and continue staying in the bullish momentum zones on these MACD and RSIs. So that's kind of how I use these helpers, right? If the helpers fall below, then that helps me know, okay, it's, it's definitely more risky now. Um, and it helps me understand also that we're really close to a tipping point where if I'm gonna take the risk, this is where I wanna take it. Whereas like, I, cause I know that in a short period of time from now, I can make the decision to bail or I made the right decision to, to take the risk, right? And it shows me in a week or two that this is gonna head higher. So I hope that helps. If, if you have your favorite altcoins, you know, go look at the weekly and look at what the MACD and the RSI are doing here. Look at the EMAs. Did you get this kind of candle or did you get the candle that Ton gave us where it was bearish and completely the opposite, right? Like I would rather stay away from Ton and play with, um, what were we just looking at? I think it was this one. Super, like I would much rather play with something like this than Ton, right? Just because of the candle it gave us, because the MACD and the RSI are close to kind of turning here, right? Um, so I hope that can help you. IceRx says long coin. Yeah, well, if Bitcoin does what it's supposed to do, yes. But I would much, I think we can wait for a retest this week, wait for some dips. You can definitely see that the 8 EMA right now on Bitcoin is right at the same spot as this R3. So we could definitely see 62.7 again. Um, and that 62K mark, which is last cycle's 1.618, if you remember correctly, um, that is the support we wanna see hold. And every time we have come back down, we have failed that 62 mark with these candles. This one failed, uh, I believe this one, no, it was this one failed and then this one failed. So that retest needs to come and it needs to hold. And then it holds and then we see the bounce and then that might be our cue like, okay, 62K finally held. Um, we can now head higher and break this structure. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for, a 62K hold and a bounce um, on the weekly chart. That would be a great thing to see. Uh, IWM, <clears throat> yes, I like IWM. I am still long, I believe from like 170, uh, and I plan on holding that a little longer. That's not what I'm looking for. There it is. Yeah, so I mean, we're still at 220. EMAs in the weekly are still bullish, so I'm not panicking on stuff like that unless they cross bearish and tell me to. You can see this is very choppy in these EMAs, so um, we can still head higher. Ultimately wanna see 233 and then see what happens when we hit there. That's the top of the greed FOMO zone. So uh, I do think that once we get through there, we can see some big moves 
on these lower market cap stocks. MSTR. The stock kind of bothers me. Like I'm not, I'm not an investor on this one. Uh, I don't really like. Oh, they split, didn't they? I haven't looked at it since they split. So now I got to redo everything. Like, sure, if I was holding this from the lows, yeah, I'd be, I'd be a happy holder. But I'm not about to buy this up here. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, that's bullish and it can see as high as, uh, these take profit levels up here. So, you know, 245 is going to be your first target, um, where you'd want to take profits and then su successively 340 and 542. That's where you should be taking profits, but yeah, bullish. I'd, I'd still be holding if I was a holder. Okay, thoughts on potential recession slash stock dump following rate cuts. Um, so yeah, I have a post and I will link that uh, in the weekly outlook again if you'd like in the long term channel on ES and what I am expecting to see uh, as far as that goes on a long term outlook scale. Uh, I can't remember where that chart is exactly or I would show it to you. It's on one of my saved charts, but uh, let me actually see if I can go find it and bring it over here real quick. Uh, where would I have to go here? And I think I pinned it. No, I didn't pin it. I wish I pinned it. Uh, yes. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so let me see if I can. No, that's not it. I'm gonna have to find it later and pin it and pin it to the channel. But it, it'll be in the in the long term stocks channel. There's too many ESs to search for, so I can't really find it right away. But um, I will definitely share that with you um, in the channels. All right. Any more questions? Going once, going twice. Thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's see if we can get crypto to hold hold these highs that it's sitting at this week and give us a little bit of a consolidation. Uh, to give it time to regroup and give us that push higher uh, that we're looking for. All right. Have a good week. Thank you.